Hi, this is a conversation with Antonio Sarabia. He is the director of the BB&T Center at the Mercer University. Uh, Antonio, can you tell us about the nature of the BB&T Center? Sure. Uh, the BB&T Center uh, for Undergraduate Research in Public Policy and Capitalism, it has a long title. It's a research center that promotes work with mainly undergraduate students. We have uh, an agenda that includes inviting speakers to our campus at Mercer University, uh, mostly uh, for the benefit of our students in economics and, and finance and others at the School of Business where I work. And, um, and we also characterize for working with our, with our students in research projects. Just recently, some of your colleagues here at Francisco Marroquin uh, so, uh, and, and attended some of the presentations of our students at the API conference in Cancun, where uh, we took about six students, all of them supported by uh, grants from the BBNT Center. Um, and uh, in, in, in general, that's, that's our activity. The center uh, was uh, granted, well, the sponsor is the bank, BBNT, uh, that gave us this uh, opportunity to work with the students about five years ago. And um, you know we have the support of our leadership, our, our dean, our, our president, the president of the university, and, and that's what we've been doing. Do you have a focus and interest in Latin America? At the moment, it's very open. We have a small number of students uh, in the School of Business, and so we have been working on different kinds of research projects with them. Uh, one of them uh, was about immigration um, from other countries, especially Latin America to the United States. Uh, we did go to Mexico, to Cancun, to, to present this project. And so I, I think that in the future, Latin America could be an interesting uh, focus for us. Uh, part of my own research agenda has to do with Latin America. So hopefully in the future, we're going to get more projects on that. In Latin America, within Latin America, uh, is something more interesting than other things? I think that Latin America is a very interesting region at the moment. There are different... Um, uh, types of uh, regimes, if you will. There is all this story about the socialist countries, uh, the 21st century socialism that they call it, where you can include Venezuela, Bolivia, uh, Argentina. But you also have some other countries like Chile, like Colombia, uh, that uh, do not uh, share those views. And so it's a very interesting region to analyze. Uh, in particular, I am from Bolivia, so I am, of course, very interested in what's happening in that country. Uh, I think that uh, the current administration um, has been, um, I think there is a lot of damage done to the institution, institutional environment in Bolivia. It's a very complex economy to analyze, and uh, we can talk more about it if you, if you like to. Yes, please, what are the challenges for Bolivia? Bolivia is a complicated case. Um, there are two different uh, aspects that you can, when, when you think about Bolivia. The first one is the macroeconomic stability. Uh, despite all the damage done to the institutional area, I think the administration has been wise enough to keep uh, macroeconomic conditions stable. And that has been a main difference between, say, Bolivia, Argentina, and Venezuela. Uh, I think that is important, and that's, of course, uh, something that the administration of Evo Morales inherited from previous uh, administrations, macroeconomic health, macroeconomic stability. But the other aspect is the more pervasive one, um, more dangerous, which is the attack to the institutional environment. Uh, in, in Bolivia, the judicial system, you cannot trust on it. And uh, therefore, doing business in Bolivia is a very complicated uh, matter. Uh, when you think at the institutional level of what's going on in the country, you realize that a lot of damage has been done. And uh, that, I think, is going to uh, negatively affect the prospects of Bolivia in the future, for sure. Can we talk about the situation of the press in Bolivia? Sure. Uh, when you think of Bolivia, you may want to think of a little Venezuela in, in that aspect. Uh, a lot of the uh, media, uh, newspapers, and uh, television have been bought by, by the government. And, uh, and as a result, um, it is very difficult to find independent uh, journalists and independent media that can um, 
you know, talk against the government or talk uh, about the things that are happening at the institutional level. Um, at the economic level, it's even worse. Um, you have to ask for permission to export your products. That was never the case in the past, right? A lot of prices are controlled. Sugar, flour, um, milk, those prices are controlled and we don't let market forces determine those prices. There is uh, impositions like the government will ask private companies to pay uh, what they call a segundo aguinaldo. Uh, so like a 13 salary at the end of the year. Uh, and you are forced to pay that to your workers. And you cannot determine that by, via supply and demand. Uh, and so there is all this attack to the institutional level and, uh, and that's the damage that's been done to, to the country. Given the gloomy situation in Venezuela, and you mentioned uh, thinking about little Venezuela, right. uh, given that gloomy situation, do other countries, do people from other countries learn from the experiences of their neighbors? You would hope so. <laughs> you would hope that that, uh, that would be the case. Uh, you, uh, you know, one sees the situation in Venezuela, which is critical, desperate. Uh, people do not have access to goods and services. It's terrible. Uh, one sees the situation in Argentina. And you would think countries would learn from those experiences and avoid those same uh, type of um, decisions. But unfortunately, uh, when you look at countries like Bolivia, and to some extent now even Chile, replicating those same mistakes, right? Not letting market forces determine the allocation of resources, but instead having the government decide many things uh, for the citizens. Uh, of course, in order to do that, they have to uh, cope with the institutional uh, system, the judicial system, and uh, that's what creates this pervasive, vicious cycle. And uh, unfortunately, it's a very good question. Uh, you, would, you would think that countries would learn, but um, I, I, I don't think that's, that's happening. Is it possible to learn a lesson from what is happening in South America? I think if you look back in history and you take a look at uh, the development of, for example, Chile, when you take a look at what's been happening in Colombia, uh, to a lesser extent in Brazil, you realize that, er, that there are teaching moments right there. That there are lessons that we can definitely learn. That when governments step in to decide prices, to decide whether you should export or not, to decide how much you should pay to your workers and whether you should give them a 13th salary at the end of the, month, uh, at the, end of the year. Um, when you do those things, typically things don't go well. Right, because companies, workers lose their incentives to be productive. And those are lessons that we learn from the experiences of Chile, from the experiences of Colombia. Or at least that we should learn, correct? Unfortunately, uh, 21st century socialism has taken over in many countries. And, um, and that's the challenge in the years to come. Antonio, thank you for sharing these experiences and ideas with us, and thank you too.